Behöver du en bil? Mabe hyrbilar finns på över 150 platser i landet och vi har nästan lika många modeller att välja på. Mabe hyrbilar. Hyrbilar som passar dig. Welcome to the final round of the season. It's time to crown the champion and we come into it on level points with Jesper Eriksson and Marcus Byfeldt tied with just three races to go for the Berlin Svenska E-Racing League's Formula Series here for 2024. It's myself, Cameron Roger, Justin Prince alongside me and Dane Baird on the production of this Race Spot TV broadcast as we bring you to Oran Park down in Australia. Of course, a now defunct circuit in real life, but we still go racing on the iRacing platform. Here's where we've been over the course of the season. We started way back uh, in January at Road Atlanta before we had a bit of a American stretch. We went uh, momentarily down to Australia, back up to Europe. Europe for a couple of races. Of course, the absolute chaos uh, that was uh, the banking in Europe by fours with the wet weather and the rain coming into town. But we go back into the sun of Oran Park. No rain expected today for the Morbi Habila Grand Final. And it's going to be rounds 19, 20 and 21 to crown our champion. Yes, Ericsson, the reigning champion. Of course, is looking very good, uh, but he comes in. Uh, actually, it's a five-point advantage, I should say, um, after some penalties and whatnot. But they were tied for a moment at the end of the previous race. Marcus Byfeld very close in behind, but it was also not just a fight for the championship that we're looking out for. Look how close it is behind the battle for third with Augustin, Fredriksson, Lenholm, and even just in behind them uh, with Homer and Half Lidison and uh, Holmbaum not too far behind. So this is going to be uh, quite something uh, to see how it's uh, all going to work out and three races still to go. We can't wait to see what is going to happen with that. Of course, a lot of bonus points and everything going on uh, in this championship. So we'll have to try and do our best to work out who is going to be crowned champion. But Justin, it's great to see that we come into the final round, especially in a series like this where there's so much going on, but we still have the championship to be decided. It's going to be razor thin margins to say the very least. Good evening, everyone, once again. When it comes to tonight, this is one of the most difficult racetracks you can have on the platform for this type of race car. This is a racetrack with a lot of history that unfortunately no longer exists. It's now a suburb as of 10 years ago. But for many drivers on the platform, the main thought is, well, your favorite meme from understanding is a cat pressing the A letter on a keyboard and going, ah. That is basically what many may be doing soon. There's not a lot of track limits. There's not a lot of runoff space. And better yet, multiple heartbreaking sections and multiple swing around sections that can cause you to get loose could mean pure chaos for the drivers today. It's really quite something. You see this mega fast uh, turn number one and in towards the uh, Coca-Cola corner, the hairpin as well, before we come into this up and under section. It's going to be really tight, Justin, isn't it? Especially in the first couple laps when everyone's so close together. It's almost like a street track uh, in many ways. It's going to be quite a tough challenge for these drivers. You were talking about this earlier today with one of the admins and one of the drivers, actually, in Linus Burlstrom. They mentioned... To emphasize, of course, the fact that you get the bonus points if you have a clean race, for example, with zero Xs, be able to keep yourself out of trouble. And better yet, the reason for the points lead difference you seen earlier was the only sweep of a round so far by Ericsson last time out. That might end up being the difference. This qualifying, Marcus Byfeldt needs to get a few 1,000s or else these another two points back here. And he certainly does so, goes up to that pole position with just a minute and a half. 
Can Ericsson respond? It's great to see the top two in the championship on the front row as well by three tenths of a second as Huff Lidison comes in on the second row in his fight uh, for P6 in the championship. We've also got uh, drivers batting in behind with uh, Lenholm Fredrickson. They are battling for P3 and they are very close indeed. So we have so many championship uh, iterations coming in and uh, the 71 there, I believe it's Bruce Jim, who you mentioning, uh, Lee Gadmin. Of course, not quite so fast in the Formula cars compared to the Oval Series that we're getting back to next week but certainly um, having some fun here in the uh, in the Formula um, Series. Coming around the final corner as well, we've got Ericsson in the 35 machine uh, coming up towards the line. Is he going to be able to uh, improve his time for the Team Superior? Uh, couldn't quite see there. Yes, he did. And getting up a bit higher. His Yonker as well. This is not too bad for him going through the massively uh, fast dog leg. Yeah, you mentioned this is where it's a lot of lift in some circumstances, but a lot of speed. You see your buddy third, fourth, fifth gear corners all the way up to that final section. And this could be a lot of trouble too. A lot of drivers today coming out. Ricardo have done this. Slam hard into the wall, lose the back end, destroy the run or races, or better yet, slam into that wall getting tight. There might be a lot of spins and a lot of crashes down the front straight away today. Oh, I think there certainly will, as that seems like qualifying has concluded and it looks like it is going to be Byfeld on the pole position. These extra couple of points could be so crucial. We've seen these two finish one and two so many times this season. They come into it um, with 10 wins between them um, out of the 18 races so far. Of course, Michael Hafnidison has actually got four wins compared to Byfeld too, but has had a couple of DNFs as well. Here's your grid for the uh, third to last race of the season. Byfeld and Ericsson, your championship contenders on the front row with half Lidison, Lenholm, Fredrickson, and then uh, Alexander Olsen inside your top six. Frisk and Helmbaum inside your top eight with Giros, Jonka, Hanna, and of course, Brostrom inside your P12. That's a bit better uh, for Linus. Helberg, Wallingston, Neptun, uh, Ericsson, Wallin, Homer on your front uh, nine rows as the uh, the rest of the drivers, um, of course, work their way through. We've got a lot of these drivers a bit further down who um, generally have, uh, you know, some uh, difficult races. But when we get to the reverse grid in race three, maybe they can get some points. We have 15 laps of action coming your way twice before a 20 lap final race inverted uh, grid for this season finale here at Oran Park. It's going to be tight. It is going to be twisty and it's going to be dry all the way through. So it's going to be fast and frantic to the end and just a handful of points separating your championship contenders with just a few races to go this season. It's going to be a tough one for the likes of Jesper Eriksson to hold on to his reigning championship title that he has in this series, winning our previous Formula Series before Christmas. But in the new year, he has been challenged by Marcus Byfeldt who, of course, came into uh, the previous season uh, halfway through and challenged him. Not enough points on the table to challenge for the championship, but this time around, he's been here for the full season and he's really going to be changing things here for Jesper Eriksson to try and make it just that little bit more difficult to get himself this championship. 15 laps is going to be very short around this Oran Park track. It's uh, no longer in real life, but it's certainly real. With the championship fight that we're going to be seeing, and Bifel gets a pretty decent launch there, but so does Eriksson. Ericsson in behind. He's going to have to file in, in behind, get the slip stream down towards the sweeper and then in towards the first breaking zone. Add to the Coca-Cola corner. Is there going to be any moves in behind as it looks like it's going to be Jesper Ericsson going to the outside line trying to do something, but he can't get past Byfeld. Uh, in behind, we're seeing Hafflinson trying to hold on to that third place, but coming for him is, of course, Lenholm on that outside as everyone works their way through. Oh, huge contact already. The triple six machine goes off in towards the breaking zone at Shell corner. Hard contact Neptune up the roll. A lot of drivers are crashing. It's the big one in the next corner. Top two have ran away because the rest of the field is dead. Everybody's in it. The whole teens, the whole 20s, everybody's crashed. Oh, that is absolutely massive. That's coming in towards the champion's uh, curve. That's a fast um, so medium speed right-hander. And it's certainly just been a bit of carnage in the opening um, two, 300 meters of this race. We come around the final corner to start lap two already. Yes, but Ericsson about half a second or so in behind and he's going to need to do some work. It's not, um, you know, absolutely uh, you know crucial to get this race win, but if he takes that momentum away from Byfeldt as he's 
done so many times. There's been a lot of times where he's been in second place and then managed to overtake for the win. In behind though, Lenholm gets up into third place ahead of Hafliderson. And of course, these battles are crucial for the third, fourth, fifth place in the championship. And with this type of race today, you need to be extremely smart. The main thing to keep in mind though, in the midst of that battle, you have Lenholm clean win. You have wing should say a flittison he's dealing with a little bit of damage for some of the rubbing broken wing for oscar frederson just behind so that's going to hurt the 112 for the rest of the first race here today especially the right handers right now you need to focus about staying out of the trouble because we've already had a quarter of the field have meatball flags in a lap and a half Wow, that was a huge crash there on that opening lap, and it certainly spread things out a little bit, especially in that midfield. As uh, we work away to uh, go on to lap three already, short laps around here. As this is Alexander Olsen in that uh, white machine trying to get the slipstream. Is there enough at this track? Is the front straight long enough to make a move? Of course, this sweeper is so fast uh, before you work your way in towards the braking zone. Not quite enough that time around, but then it gets into this uh, street circuit style uh, part of the lap as they uh, get into the tight and twisty section. There's the 404 of Helberg, who's trying to make a move as well, and he certainly does, because the car ahead uh, of Neptune goes a bit wide. And it gets right to just providing pressure could be the difference. I don't even think you can factor in the draft all that much, because that front straightaway might gain you half a car length. Not too much, but here's what started everything you mentioned neptune right in the back wheels of several drivers that sent off and then everybody else the next corner decided you know what let's up that let's block the track oh they're all spinning around there that was it was like kiros uh, going around but in behind everyone uh, continues so this is the 66 contact in the back with the 93 further contact than ever as ever oh no one of the other street trends drivers going up in the air so they clearly want to do some uh, flight simulator, uh, not racing simulator this evening, as there was some, it's actually fairly minor contact, but it was just wheel to wheel, sent the car up in the air, then going over the roll hoop there. Fortunately, uh, we have the halo to save the, uh, the virtual drivers as more cars going off into the gravel. Yeah, all I can really say to that is, this is a suburb now, not an airport. These drivers are trying, though, to destroy people's backyards. They just don't know it yet. But there was a lot of discussion, after all, about this being the most dangerous race not on the wet this year. You're seeing exactly why. You're talking about a car that's extremely light every single corner. Your top two are the only two who really seem to have sustained success in the final practice keeping it going, let alone avoiding spins. 112 goes a bit wide at the final corner as Olsen gets up into the top five. Should have that one covered off in towards turn one, although Fredrickson actually gets a little bit of on the outside line there, but surely has to back out and he does in towards the braking zone. Oh, is able. oh but first contact up ahead though. Olsen went in a bit too deep. Half Lidderson uh, had some contact with him uh, going through the apex there. Was that Half Lidderson making a mistake? Was that just Olsen breaking too late? That was absolutely Olsen just missing the braking zone by about three car lanes. He's lucky he locked it up long enough to avoid contact, but just having a mistake like that today. The speed differential is huge for the middle sector with even the tight bits. You lose a lot of speed, you go side by side for a long time, and then it's a test on how comfortable you are as a driver. If you do get side by side, well, they just lost one and a half seconds to the 81 machine. They yeah, certainly did. That was a nice side-by-side -side moment through the middle part as we went over the bridge and into the, the fast right-handers. Uh, Fredrickson tried it up the inside, but in the end, the outside line for Olsen was able to hold on. We come uh, onto the next lap already. So many cars in the pit lane after that carnage on that first lap, and Olsen seems to be able to hold on to this into his braking zone this time around. It's actually Fredrickson who tries to break a bit later and misses that apex. He needs to watch out for his teammate Holmbaum in the, uh, the pink uh, alloy machine trying to chase him down yeah but remember like i said that right front wing is essentially twisted up and bent in essentially that takes away the downforce the especially the front end to be able to rotate the car that's going to be trouble the rest of the way up towards the front of these groupings though it's still getting to where you have overlaps now because you have drivers who have already pit drivers that gain track position because of the crash others on recovery drives this is to where it becomes a major challenge to make sure you 
keep your head on a swivel knowing there's going to be massive pace differences from around here. Yeah, there certainly are. There's a couple of drivers lap down. There's Philip Horner and uh, Linus Brustrom. Uh, they've had... Uh they've yeah, had some repairs they've come back out on the track but out of the race we've got Neptune, Wallingston, Motin, uh, Kamara, Yonka and Lundberg um, unfortunately who are all involved in that uh, issues in the first lap we come back up to the front to Jesper Eriksson though and he is dropped off by 1.7 seconds so this is really strong for Byfeld if he can try and get this first race win of the evening this really puts a bit more pressure on Jesper Eriksson to try and take some risks in race two and three as a matter of fact, it puts Beinfeld in the championship lead because remember the difference. Oh, there goes an incident point as well. So take that bonus point off the board, at least for the 37 uh, and more trouble in front of them. Absolutely. I think it was one of the bright esports uh, cars having some problems there. Was that uh, Linus Brustrom who continues? He's lost another lap now. So it might have been the 71 who is still having some issues. Oh, just losing the rear end there. Uh, come around the Momo corner. He manages to get going. Um, but uh, that, there where it was. That was the leaders coming through. So fortunately, that didn't happen. Uh, you know, a few seconds uh, later. Otherwise, there would have been potential contact. Just showing you how difficult it is out there. You're saying the, the, the rear end's pretty light on this car as it is and it seems like all these corners especially with the elevation change and the sort of medium speed nature really sort of on the limit in this car yeah i was gonna say when it comes to this car too remember there's a lot of arrow wash that can kick in around one second or so a lot of the tracks we went to throughout the season had great impact from the draft your leader with the clean air has got the massive advantage with ericsson because of the tight nature because there's not so much advantage on the straights it's absolutely decimated i think his front tires first of all but second just the ability to keep up right now that dirty air from the early going has shredded the 37th tires he is slipping and sliding in the backdrop he certainly is as we're halfway through this first race of the Morbi Hibillic Grand Final and we have the championship leaders in P1 and P2 fighting for this but Ericsson seemingly can't hold on and in the background they've really dropped some of the faster drivers in this series as well as there's a huge wiggle there after the lock up from Ericsson because uh, Lenholm was pulled away from Half Lidderson. Half Lidderson has won four races uh, this season. I mean, that's going to be coming into about a quarter of the season that he's won. Um, no championship and he's been a strong driver. Oh, there's a car off there. Oh, for a moment, I thought that was Byfeld. There's another driver having some issues. Well, that was Robert Erickson that time, but it's another case of okay, I got to rejoin. Oh, wait, the leader's here. Floor it! God, that was very sketchy uh, for the 35 machine. <laughs> And certainly don't want to be doing that uh, once more as he's continuing to have some issues there, doing some lawn mowing. Um, yeah, I'm sure the uh, the new residents of this property will be loving that one, a bit of free gardening services, but not quite enough uh, to be uh, getting some uh, solid points uh, in this race. We come back to this three-way battle, though, uh, because er uh, sorry, Olsen is in front of Fredrickson and Holmbom. Holmbom has been a uh, bit of a dark horse in this championship, has some good pace in that number 10 machine, but they're certainly chasing down Olsen, who has himself is uh, still not too far away from Hefferson. Yeah, I'm looking at some of the times right now in this group. These drivers are actually a little bit quicker, per se, in terms of the tempo overall, by about a tenth or two a lap. Just cooperation, so to speak, amongst them. Fredrickson, you have to give him a huge credit, though. Despite all the wing damage to the right front, he's, if anything, feeling a little bit more comfortable, although he's tight. He's still maintaining enough to be able to benefit in the left-handers, at least, for the second half of the racetrack and keep things a little bit bunched up together. I don't know how long it's going to last with the fact he keeps going in the grass, though. Yeah, as much as it, as you're kind of saying, it might be overall slower if the balance is actually helping the rear end, because, of course, it's fixed setup in this series as well. So um, you can't really do too much to change that. So if this actually puts the balance a bit more on the rear end. It might actually help him, uh, considering the issues with the rear end that we've seen quite a lot of people. It is a thought. I prefer a clean race car over anything else. True. True. I mean, the best way to adjust to a fixed setup is learn how to adjust the driving style. If it comes down to take stock our example being able to slam the wall down at bristol to break the tie rod and then all of a sudden you could turn better maybe you should figure out how to get it to turn without breaking the million dollar race car 
Yeah, you are. You're very true on that one, and I'm sure it's, it would still be overall faster because um, generally, uh, you know, a pointy car is. Um, you don't want a car that's just understeering all over the place. As they have closed up to half the it was over a second, is now down uh, to about a uh, half a second or so as we come in towards the final corner to start lap 12. So just four laps remaining, including the one that they are going on to here for the first race uh, of this evening. Of course, we'll get a second race following very quickly another 15 uh, laps with the grid uh, being the result from this one. So basically just a reset uh, mid race as such before we go to the reverse grid for the final uh, race of the season coming up. But uh, these, uh, there's definitely a few battles still out there. Uh, we come back to the front though and Ericsson has dropped off by another second. Yeah, at this point, I think Ericsson's just in damage control mode. Byfeld just seems a lot more comfortable. There's also a massive difference. It's worth mentioning in the final practice was keeping track of this because of just how difficult it is to keep clean here. Ericsson finished final practice with 37 in points. Not a major barometer, but it is one because Byfeld and all the practice laps he put in only one time hit the green stuff. In other words, Byfeld's very comfortable here. And this might be Ericsson's worst case scenario for his championship hopes. Especially if Byfeld then does a similar <laughs> a similar job in race two and pulls off into the distance. Because then when we get to race three, they're going to be side by side at the back of the pack and trying to battle their way through all of that carnage that potentially might happen on lap one. So, but that's uh, if buts and maybes. What we know for now is Byfeld is looking strong and he's clearly done um, a decent amount of practice because to be comfortable just in around a track like this is so, so difficult, especially with the elevation changes, the, the medium speed nature of these corners are really floating through them. We've also seen, though, a lot of the times, Byfeld has, on the draft tracks at least, in my opinion, not had a lot of help in terms of his front-running teammates because he's been far and away the best of the street trend side, in my opinion. We've seen sometimes he's got some help, not most times. Hold on, I think about fourth on back may have just imploded because there's a lot of shuffling all of a sudden of that pylon. The leader's running away with two laps to go. But everybody else is uh, trying to not run into the grass. Yeah, Olsen and Havlinson, they were battling for fourth place. They're now in seventh and eighth. I did see them uh, flip-flop a couple of times, and now they've dropped down. So I wonder if there was some contact or a spin between them as the two drivers uh, go hand-in-hand -hand once more. We're now looking at Joka Frisk, who's having one of his best races of the season up in P6. Havlinson now all over the back, as Olsen is a couple of um, seconds off the back of him. We're hearing that they both went off in sector three last lap around. So something definitely happened between the two as they were fighting for that fourth place. Let's put it this way. It's at least taken out one driver. This is what I was talking about and what we've seen on this pylon. Got a little bit argy-bargy, but based on the fact we've seen Havlinson do this all season, if he wants to squeeze you out, he'll try and hard contact Olsen meatball flag to the pit lane to end the race. Oh, that's a shame for him. He's showing some good speed. Uh, but unfortunately, that is going to be back to pit lane as we come on to the final lap first uh, race of the evening. And Olsen is going to be, uh, yes, not enjoying that one as he goes way too deep in towards turn one there, which just adds to the issues before going back to pit road. Uh, but certainly back to the front. It has been a much more calm race for Byfeld. He held on to the lead down in towards the first couple of corners. And that was enough because since then he's had the pace to pull away from Jesper Eriksson, who's, um, to be fair, in the last few laps, he has stayed within that three-second bubble, but he has not had the pace to hold on to the 105. The championship contenders are going to flip-flop once more, and by felt, will be a couple of points ahead as he have two races to go, and he'll be back on the pole position, of course, for that race too. Got some traffic in the final corner, but he won't worry about that because he's going to take victory with just two races remaining this season. And he is going to be leading the way. He's the winner of race one here for the Morbi Habili Grand Final at Oran Park. As Jesper Eriksson follows him through in second place to just add another twist in the tail of this championship. And of course, even Lenholm will get a nice chill third place as well in his battle for third in the championship. Byfeld's going to be difficult to beat if he has this pace already. 
We still have a couple more races to go to shake things up here, but Ericsson needs to try something different and try something different quickly if he wants a true shot here because at the minimum, this not including the incident point bonus points for each race, mind you, Cam. It's a plus seven swing for Byfeld to give him the points lead. And that is going to be crucial when we work things out at the end uh, of the season. The uh, the bonus points, there's plenty of them about. Uh, you get bonus points for, for instance, for qualifying, for having a zero X race, for getting the fastest lap uh, in each race, as well as the points for the race themselves, which is a big total um, of 50 for a race win, um, going all the way down to one point for 35th place. So, so many points on offer. And we need to see how it is going to uh, to work out, of course, with the final two races. We've seen the uh, the carnage ensuing, and it will certainly be that once more when we have another uh, lap one to come. Here is the results for race one, though. And it was fastest lap for Marcus Byfeld, which is going to be very crucial for him as he takes the race lead as well. We've got three Force drivers following him behind with Ericsson, Lenholm and Fredrickson. Then Holmbaum gets a top five. Uh, as well and he's part of that uh, Forza clan too. Then we have Yoka Frisk who's uh, having a really great race up in P6. Have to listen down in P7 after that contact. Wallen in 8th, Homer and Helberg round out your top 10. As we get to the next page, see Vedestat and Hawkins shot. He was off the track of points. Giros was around loading Nordgren and Brostrom, the final drivers on the lead lap. Then uh, Horner, Ericsson and Olsen will finish one lap down. Brostrom will finish three laps down and of course, just a few more drivers who were DNFs with Wallingsum, Neptum, Motin, Kamara, Limburg, and Jonker, your top 26. And the, uh, of course, the grid for race two that we'll be getting to very shortly as we will see them line up once more for another run down in towards the first corner. Justin, do you think second time round they can have it a bit more clean? To have it a bit more clean? Well, first of all, changing conditions a lot more hotter, so that's going to make it difficult to keep it clean. Second thing, second, a lot more pressure now for Ericsson. We just got the confirmation in. Byfeld, another five-point swing based on incident points. He had zero. That means his lead is even bigger. Essentially, it goes from a plus seven swing from the last race to 12. A huge gain for Byfeld now. It's uh, certainly looking good at this point, but the job still needs to be done. If he now has a DNF, yes, Bergson goes on to win. That is going to be a big point swing in itself. But the lights come on as we go racing once more. We have a stop and start for the second race as everyone calms down and then gets back racing once more. And it's a good launch once again for the 105 machine. He's left everyone in his dust in behind, coming down towards the sweeper for the first time of asking. And it's the three fours drivers in behind, of course, shouldn't be battling with their teammate Ericsson. They're going to be having their own battle as a battle for third place in the standings. The top two get away. We're side by side in the background, though. We've got Lenholm on the inside with Fredrickson on the outside, the two teammates. But Lenholm is going to hold on to that third place in the back of the pack though can they all get through the hairpins for the first time surprisingly no major troubles yet every time i say that we end up having a big earth shattering kaboom but so far very well done for the front runners now it's going to get interesting though with the fours machines ericsson in most races has tried to work a lot with his teammates to be able to try and get around by felt not an easy place to be able to work with teammates here today, but at the very least, <gasps> think, oh, that was near Crash City. Oh, he's pushing, isn't he? He's taking the risk, and Byfeld is making him do it with the, just the pure pace that he's got in that Street Trends car. As he come across the line to start lap number two, Byfeld is looking strong. He's held on to the lead, and once more, he's going to try and pull away from his championship rival. And it's not the track where you want to be pushing the limit. Um, I'm surprised that Byfeld was able to have a 0x race uh, last time out, but just being smooth and fast is generally the way to go is Ericsson who has to take the risks in behind. And here's the I think it's still going to be extremely tricky. That airfall right now is about half a second for the time being, but we already seen all it takes is about five laps. Bifelt breaks the draft and then boom, Ericsson's on the back foot the rest of the way with tires that are worn out for trying to push to keep up with Bifelt's rapid pace. I think he needs to hope that Bifelt has traffic hold him up. The thing is, 
The most traffic's been in the grass more so than on the pavement so far. <laughs> that is, uh, that's very true. We didn't really see the, uh, the lap traffic getting too far as in behind Fredrickson's gone off. He has must have gone off in that 112. Everyone is going past him. Where is he? Oh no, he's round at the final corner. And that's why, because he's going to have to wait for the whole field of cars to come back through. Yeah, just went a little bit wide and unfortunately lost the rear end and then just has to sit there. If he does anything, if he moves, it's going to be a crash. He just has to sit and wait. And he's gone back to the front because half Anderson is making moves as he gets past a home bomb there to get in towards P4. Now that was extremely lucky for the 112. Anybody, any one of those drivers missed a corner. Goes a little bit wide like they do it. Usually what we've seen already, that would have been disaster. But to the Ericsson point again though, he is looking like he's changing things up a touch bit. The problem is the differences in lines here. He keeps slamming the floor across the curbing right now. He's nearly trying to cut all the corners to be able to gain time and I don't think that's going to work. Yeah, it's one of those things you take the risk to gain that half a tenth here, half a tenth there, but then if it loses you five seconds, ten seconds, or even a championship, is the risk really worth taking? But then in, on the other hand, you're not going to sit in second place and just accept defeat when we still have half of the event uh, to go. We have, of course, one final race following this, but the top 20 get inverted. So if these two finish where they are, they're going to be starting on the 10th row side by side, battling for the championship, going through all the carnage is going to be quite something. And look at Ericsson sliding, dancing that rear end around as this race, he seems to be keeping a bit closer to Byfield, but is he destroying the tires? If anything, it looks like he is extremely uncomfortable because watch every movement coming out of the corner. That's a lot of loose steer. And remember the track temperature swing is 13 degrees Fahrenheit. That may not sound like that much per se, but remember, it's mild conditions at 73. At about 80, 83 like it is right now, it's basically you're frying out on the beach right now. Imagine that in the tire circumstance, it's still cool conditions, but it's a lot more looser conditions because of that, and it's windy. Yeah, it certainly is tough one out there. Uh, tough track, tr tough conditions, and tough situation as well. Yeah, you have to remember that these uh, drivers going for a championship, there's a, just a lot going on uh, for them to focus on. And often with you know race that you get like this, the champions and you know they step up and they have some of their best performances of the season in the races like this, and they're able to keep it calm and do so. And Byfeld is almost uh, doing that. He's really, I mean, he's got the pace. I'm um, just, you know, flat out. He's got the pole position. Um, he's got fastest lap um, so far in this race as well. He has the pace and he's just doing what he needs to do. And it's one of those things when you're at a track like this as well, if you're in the rhythm like that, you're just in a flow. You're just hitting every apex, hitting the gear shifts at the right time. And the car just goes nicely around the track. Whereas Ericsson, he's just moving all over the place. Yeah, just... I don't know if this is going to work for Ericsson unless he finds a way. He can't even get the corner smooth right now because he's hitting those curbing. For example, you just rump it across the inside up to a corner. There's a lot of different curbing there, the older style. Also, trouble, Feather Online Gaming's Nordgren. And that's called missing your breaking point and making sure you don't run somebody over. He says sorry, even though he's the one who went off. <laughs> if he didn't move off the track, he would have ran someone over. Yes, that was uh, certainly the, the polite way uh, of doing it. And I think maybe just caught the um, the grass ever so slightly, which probably didn't help that. Uh, but he is uh, continuing on and this race is looking a lot better. Actually, we only have the one driver of Olsen uh, down pit road at this moment in time. Norgren, of course, uh, went off, but he's still going, um, which is a lot nicer than what we had in that first uh, race. So how are we looking in the battles in behind? Because Melvin Augustin is not here. Uh, today so it's really the battle uh, between Lenholm and Fredrickson for third place in the championship and Lenholm um, of course if Fredrickson going down is looking very good if he can get another third place finish yeah it's not been a pretty round for the 112 he's just on full recovery he might be great for the invert race I'll say that much that's the one positive I've got left for this race for the 112 but 
when you break a wing essentially in the first race and drive with a broken wing the whole way and then you end up having to come back from dead last after your own self-spin on the second lap of a 15-lap race, you're not really giving yourself too many favors, Cam. No, you're certainly not. And I think that's possibly been Fredrickson's, um, you know, biggest uh, struggle over the last few months. Bifo does have another purple lap. He's really going for this. In the background, though, there's trouble for one of his teammates. I think that was a Street Trends driver uh, going off in the background. No, it wasn't, actually. And uh, un unfortunately, is that Motin? Yeah, Motin has gone around and he uh, went off there. That's an interesting place to go. I don't think we've seen anyone crash there so far uh, coming off over the bridge. Um, but he is uh, having to get back on. Uh, but yeah, I think Fredrickson has been struggling with that, um, Justin, just sort of the execution of the race. He has the pace. He's in a good team. Uh, but I just think some of the execution hasn't been there. Yeah, now at this rate, you see the purple so far. Byfeld already in line on top of things here. At least another plus seven. And it could essentially mean Ericsson needs Byfeld to absolutely not be able to get through the traffic. I think that invert race is absolutely going to be your decider in the championship now. I know that's the simple thing, but it's been difficult to recover. We've already seen that with Fredrickson. If you're talking about your best drivers in the field, I don't think you get all the way through cleanly. That's the wild thing. Keep in mind, the drop points are another factor. There are already three total races that were just talked about before today, Cam, by the race admins, a part of the drops. But it's going to come down to potentially those full calculations. The drop differences for Ericsson, 12, 7, and 2. What are Byfeld's drops? 33, 27, and 21. Yeah, Ericsson is, uh, he's only really had those three bad races, um, whereas uh, Byfeld has been a lot more uh, consistent over the course of the season. So when we have these drop scores, it actually works out that Byfeld drops more points. Um, obviously, that's been in the, you know, that is already taken into account with the standings that we showed you at the beginning uh, of, the, uh, of the show, when it's just five points between them, but it is to be noted because Ericsson, realistically he's going to keep those three because he's not going to get worse from that whereas Byfeld may um, end up dropping uh, more or less as but he sets another purple lap this time around he's really pushing as you've seen an onboard lap there from Joka Frisk uh, showing us around great to see the uh, the onboard uh, driver view uh, webcams from a lot of these uh, a lot of these guys and he's certainly um, looking very good for another top top result today yeah, it's been a much better race, too. A much calmer race, too, even with the temperature situation. No one has had to go to the pit lane, really, except for Alexander Olsen for repairs today. And he didn't do that in a meatball flag. This grand file is getting really intriguing, though, because Byfeld is a rocket ship. But everybody else right now, with how things are going with Ledholm on back, could become a bit of a shuffle. I am intrigued, though, on what happens in that battle for a second, because Len Holmes the quicker of the two in the four Z Sports cars in the backdrop cam. But you can't pass your teammate in the hunt of a championship, right? Do you want to be their teammate after? Look at that! You can't beat that. So just for, for reference with all the, the purple times that come in, they're literally just by a couple of thousandths every time. So it's not like he's going 10th faster, 10th faster, just by a couple of thousandths. But that also shows consistency. He's consistently on the fastest lap of the race pace, which is quite uh, remarkable. Uh, and yeah, regarding fours, I don't think Lenholm is going to overtake A, uh, because he's a teammate. Ericsson's going for the championship. And B, Lenholm is looking pretty good for third place in the standings himself at this moment in time with Augustin not being here uh, and with Fredrickson dropping out and Lenholm also getting some of his best results means he's going to be then dropping some other bad results so he's going to gain even more points from there so I think he is uh, he's looking pretty good for that third place so I don't think we'll expect them to overtake but uh, yeah. you never know um, if Ericsson is almost going to concede let's uh, see if he uh, lets Lenholm try and go for the win but I think Bifo has got the pace for that too that's what I kind of see happening amongst those force machines because they've kind of done that a lot of the times and you see a lot more teamwork play, so to speak, in open wheels. 
There is the one being produced or proposed by our producer. I will give him credit. You don't want to give him credit for the idea. There's the chance of a buffer car for the invert, right? Remember, <laughs> instead of starting back row 1920, if you start in front of him, essentially, for the blocks, I don't know if I'd take the loss of points. It's one of those things where I'd rather have the points now than later when there's so many variables <clears throat> that would come up in that next race. Because um, already by lap one, um, Bifold could be ahead of him. So uh, again, in that second race, and then he's lost those extra three points. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it if uh, I was in their position. I would try and get the points on the board and uh, especially as it's almost a certainty that they're going to finish uh, P 2P3 in this race, he might as well uh, take it. But let's see what Lenholm does as uh, it, it does seem like these Fours guys do like to fight between themselves. The thing is, though, it's been difficult even to do that for all race, especially for those on even pace. The only person on par with Ericsson is Lenholm. Everybody else is in a different ballpark. Or should I say, they're currently at the ballpark that's at the yard that's set up at the grade school, I think, that's on the ground so you're currently in real life. Uh, it's that big of a difference between the top three and everybody else. We're talking a second lap quicker. Yes, they are absolutely on uh, on fire this race. It is quite uh, it's quite remarkable actually to be to have that much difference at such a short track uh, as well. I know there's quite a few tricky corners here, but it's only one minute three seconds. We've seen um, tracks be double this, but uh, you know they're not uh, uh, with smaller g gaps. But the, you know what they're doing is uh, some quite incredible driving. As Ericsson did have a bit of a lock up there, I think saw some puffs of smoke. He is struggling, and especially when he's got the pressure of his teammate in behind now. And it's probably one of those things where oh, you know, I don't want to hold up Ivan, but uh, it looks like Ivan is going to sit in behind for now, Justin. Yeah, it's kind of the thought where after the race said. I had to block you. I've had, I didn't, I wanted to let you go in any circumstance, but if I do that, I'm losing this title. I'm not taking a risk. There's so much to talk about in terms of this, but it all comes down to quite simply. Ericsson just needs to be able to hold on. This is the closest anybody's been to his rear end all race. That's saying a lot, but Lenholm, he's still pushing like he wants to pass his teammate here with these later breaks. I think it is potentially a situation where he just can't quite overtake. It is tricky around this track as we come on to the final lap of race number two here for the Morbi Habila Grand Final. And is there going to be an overtake between the four Z Sports teammates? Ericsson locks up once more. He's wiggling about. He's going wide and he's got just a lap to hold on from his teammates and hold on to his championship hopes. Lenholm's giving him a lot of breaks right now. Here's the thing. Lenholm might have the chance to pip a fast slap. He's the only other person in the flats like Byfeld. Byfeld's got a lot of traffic, but he's been outright dominant. Yeah, he certainly has. And yeah, you're right. Lenholm is only 12 thousandths off Byfeld's fastest lap as Byfeld has to navigate some traffic through the final couple of corners as he works his way in towards the final breaking zone as the checker comes out. Byfeld is going to go two from two with one final race to go. He is taking control of this championship. And yes, but Ericsson's crown is definitely uh, under, <laughs> under threat here with just a 20 that reverse grid race coming your way. Byfelt takes the win. Yes, Berrickson is in second. And Ivan Lenholm follows him through in third place as he looks to get third place in the championship himself. We've got one final race to go. We'll confirm the results of this and get to the final race after some messages from our partners.
Mobi hyrbilar finns på över 150 platser i landet och vi har nästan lika många modeller att välja på. Mobi hyrbilar. Hyrbilar som passar dig. Well, it all comes down to this one final race to go in the Bonus Fenska e Racing Ligans Formula Series for 2024. It is Byfeld versus Ericsson, and one final 20 lap reverse grid is going to settle the dust here at Oran Park. Of course, a no longer real life track, but we have it here on the iRacing service. And it has been an interesting first couple of races of the evening for the Morbi Habili Grand Final. And we can't wait to see what is going to happen. But Justin, Marcus Byfeld has really dominated uh, this and uh, we'll get to the results of that second race. Byfeld wins by two seconds the end from Ericsson, who had so much pressure from his teammate Lenholm in third place. half and has a solid race to get back up into fourth. Wallen and Holmbom, and then uh, Giros ran out of your top seven. Jocker Frisk with another strong result for him in P8. Homer and uh, Linus Brustrom round out your top 10 and confirmation at the bottom that the fastest lap was by Marcus Byfeld. He gets those extra a uh, uh, couple of points um, for the championship. Horner and Fredrickson. Fredrickson there dropping down. That's crucial for him if, uh, his championship hopes for third place. Uh, Schott, Eriksson, Vedestad in your top 15. Jonker, Kamara, Moten, Loden and Helberg inside uh, your top 20. And then the final drivers were Lundberg, Brostrom on the lead lap. Norgren one lap down. Then some DNS for Wallingston, Neptun and Alexander Olsen um, as well. So Justin, we come into this final reverse grid race. Top 20 there being reversed. It is going to be quite something for those championship contenders to battle their way through the field. It's going to be outright chaotic because some of the drivers starting up on the front row in the next few minutes for that have not been comfortable here at the racetrack. 20 laps is a long time to try and recover. But remember, if there's any big crashes, if there's a crash amongst the championship front runners, everything changes. To put it quite simply, we did get the information for the lawn from Linus Brostrom and the admin staff. 54 points to tie for Ericsson now. That's if Byfeld crashes. Let's put it this way. Essentially, Ericsson needs Byfeld to have trouble for him to have a perfect race in terms of Ericsson, and that's the chance. If I'm understanding this correctly, Cam, Byfeld's domination today just may uh, almost put him out of reach. Yeah, he's got all of the bonus points that he needs. He got 0x in both races, so that's an extra 10 points. And remember, in this championship uh, format where we're looking at basically one or two points per position as such, to get 10 points for basically doing nothing, <laughs> quite literally, uh, by just driving the track. Uh, that is certainly something quite um, quite big indeed. And then, of course, you got the bonus points for the fastest laps. So that's an extra uh, four points to each. And then the pole position, that's an, another one on top of that. So 16 points. So that's the difference um, between what is that first and sixth, let's say, um, in terms of race position. He's got that for free. So he's basically got those five, six positions for free. Um, so Byfeld comes into this to championship leader and just needs to keep it on the road. Top 35 get points. And we don't have 35 points here today, Justin. So he basically just needs to finish us, just needs to get those points to 100% confirm it. And that is even assuming that Ericsson is going to have a perfect race. Which is easier said than done, first of all. And second, Ericsson struggled to have a clean race all session, let alone qualifying in the practice, let alone all the races. This could be extremely nerve-wracking because now you're in your third different weather conditions of the race. It's the more intermediate of the weather conditions, but this is the more chaotic of the times. 
racing to the sunset. It's time to get your seatbelts ready. This is going to be wild. Certainly is a longer race, though. 20 laps, but also the top 20 are inverted, and here is how they line up. So Helberg got to the reverse grid pole with Loden alongside him, Moted and Kamara on your second row with Yonka and Vedestad, your top six, heading into the final race of the season. Ericsson, Hook and Schott, uh, Fredrickson, Horner, Brostrom, Homer, your top 12 as they try and work their way to the end of the season. Frisk, Giros, Holmbom, Wallen, uh, Hafnidesson, Lenholm, your top 18. And then, of course, the final drivers to be reversed is Ericsson and Byfeldt as we'll let the rest of the drivers just work their way through to the final grid, the final uh, row of the grid and the final row of the season. We've been racing uh, for some three months now, and it is literally racing into the sunset here at Oran Park, and it is a good opportunity for some other drivers to get some good results. But can they hold on? We've seen, though, that overtaking is difficult around this track, but what is not difficult is going off and crashing we got helberg in the 404 from the pole position and he gets away nicely to hold on as we come down towards the sweeper for the first time of asking moten kamara in the background going side by side in towards the first corner as well but it looks like he's gonna be moten holding on to that one around the outside in towards the first corner though it's gonna be helberg who loses that potentially to load him but did he keep it on the track we're seeing all sorts of carnage and contact coming through the turn two as well i think that was a uh, happy in there just getting sent out wide as we come in towards the next hip and this is where the carnage was on the first race but it looks like everyone has got through nicely this time around but certainly some argy bargy out there this was the main concern for Byfeld here not only surviving but getting through the hornet's nest Ericsson just got hit by a street trends car that might just about do it because that is an incident point right there and that means even if he wins the race, he's not going to get those extra five bonus points. So that could be championship done. It is an uphill climb either way. But we'll have to continue racing because you never know what is going to happen in this series. Coming out to the final corner as Helberg was able to regain that lead. So Loden must have gone a little bit too wide coming down towards uh, Coca-Cola on that first lap. As in behind it is Loden, Moten, Kamara, Yonka, your top five as we get on to lap number two. Are they going to make the breaking zone this time around. Yes, Loden has found that one, but in the background is actually Moten. He's gone off into the gravel there, onto the grass. He's going to be losing the place. Kamara gets through, and so does Yonka. Maybe a couple of other drivers. Yeah, and right now, Ericsson's driving on ice capades and on eggshells, on everything slippery without trying to break things because Byfeldt's right behind him, and now there's cars breaking in front of him. What a dodge by Ericsson! Oh my word, that was quite something. Three, four cars involved there as they went around to the champion curve. And was that, there's further contact actually up at the uh, up at the bridge corner uh, with uh, dust being flown up in the air. We've seen multiple drivers uh, go off once more. I have to try and wait for that to calm down to work out exactly who was involved. I think Brustrom uh, was involved. He's gone back to the pit lane. Vedestad Motin have also got around. Uh, Ericsson, Homer, they've dropped to the back. So quite a few drivers having some issues. That might be your candidate for dodge of the season, though, for Byfeld. Five, six cars crashing in front of him. You have one choice. Either hit the brakes and hope for the best, or do what he did and pick a gap and floor it. Byfeld just picked up incident points in the backdrop, though, because he just hit a force machine trying to dive underneath them at Coca-Cola. So take out the incident point bonus points for both your front runners. So it is a 1v1 battle on the track. Ericsson 6th, Byfeld in 8th. They've done good uh, progress already in this race. Kamara gets the fastest lap uh, last time around as well. So there's still those extra couple of bonus points there. Let's see a replay of this coming in towards the champion's curve. There's already been a bit of contact. Then it's just a stack up. And Ericsson managed to avoid the, uh, definitely some contact with a teammate, though, actually on that left-hand side. Um, so that might be Lenholm uh, who was involved in that one. So not a clean move, but a at least they're still racing. At least his car didn't end up on the tow truck to end up the championship right then and there. At this point, I think Ericsson's main goal, not only get the fast slap like he's doing right now in the midst of the slipstream train, but also just simply get the win and then let the points lie where they may. That seems to be the thought if you're the 37 because it's out of your hands from this point. You don't know what can happen.
Absolutely. I mean, I guess the goal is to win every race, but especially in a situation like this, that's his only choice. Let's see this on board with Jesper Eriksson. There's contact. There's smoke. He goes to the, oh, it goes to the right-hand side. What a run that was. So it was actually him on the right-hand side. So it's his teammates uh, on the outside. Um, so there must be maybe Fredrickson and Holmbom, uh, for instance, on that outside. They were the ones uh, having the contact. But it was Eriksson on that inside line somehow chose to drive through the smoke. Here is it from Byfeldt's point of view. Oh, my word. He followed him through. Wow. Well. That was insane to keep his race alive as well. I race in top 10. Uh, I would definitely think we're going to see that in that. That was quite something. Byfell as well with the fastest lap. He's got pace left in this championship. He's trying to chase down. So this second car in the train is Jesper Eriksson. He's trying to get back in Kamara there. Let's see this once more uh, from Byfell. at uh, full speed. And he just goes pretty much full lock right. And somehow the space opens up. So that is Lenholm in front. So it was Lenholm who's made the contact on the left. Yeah, that kind of confirms again. Already we knew Ericsson had contact from behind from one car. That kind of makes things very tricky for him regardless now. Here's the thing. Remember, if they get to 15 incident points, it's a drive-through penalty. You're talking about potentially at least your championship front runners with at least two Forexes possibly from all the argy-barginess. It's not clean sailing right now. And now they have to get around an Alcatec machine that has had a very rough day of things in Hendrick. Uh, absolutely. It's, uh, it's a difficult one in that, uh, in that uh, 404 because you have a bit of a rough day, but it actually puts you up to the front. And now I've got championship rivals uh, battling with you. Diving it down the inside is the two 4Z Sports. They both managed to get past Bifo also on the exit. I think we'll get uh, the move as come down in towards uh, Shell Corner. Yes, three drivers going past the 104 there. Maybe Kamara just not really wanting to get too much involved in that championship as such, as we see another one of the Ford's cars on the screen. This is Fredrickson in the 112, who hasn't had the best couple of races, but um, as we've been mentioning, that puts you up to the front in this reverse grid. After all, he's done pretty well with reverse grid races this season. This is a prime candidate for a potential win right here. But here's the thing. This is even more bigger than for Helberg because he has been having a hard time in traffic. I don't think these are the fastest cars on track right now. It's going to get tight on the margins between this group and the next group. But these two are having some solid runs. Here we go. Fredrickson, a better run. Oh, that's tight in towards the king. Oh, no! The sweeper. Oh, and he goes off into the grass. Does the 404. And that is going to be race done pretty much because he's going to be dropping all the way down. And his race win hopes go up in smoke. Uh, has he been able to continue on the track? I think he has. But that was a huge moment. This puts Fredrickson into the lead as Le uh, Loden tries to um, hold him down. And yeah, just uh, through the sweeper goes a little bit too wide. And fortunately, doesn't take out Fredrickson. Great awareness by Fredrickson to see what was happening. Honestly, I think Halberg gave too much space. Quite simply, it looked like he was given a car lane space, and that just caused him to hit the grass, and that's kind of the pressurize a mistake viewpoint. It's a move you need to be able to do as a driver. Fredrickson just showed the nose, had the inside. Halberg gave him a lot of space. He's spinning car, hit the brake. Bye-bye. I'll take my lead. Oh, that was very, very tight um, indeed. And yeah, definitely went out to first gear for a moment there just to try and um, slow down a little bit more to try and avoid as we go side by side once more in towards the sweeper. This is Byfeld getting past Lenholm and it is now going to be a 1v1 for Byfeld and Fredrickson for the final place on the podium. I'll tell you what, Either of these could still win this race. The amount of laps that we've got left is all huge. Send down the inside there for Lenholm. Of course, trying to help his teammate in that battle. But uh, Byfeld was able to hold on to that position in P4. He's got the fastest lap, the extra two points. And I, as I was saying, wouldn't be surprised if he's able to chase uh, Fredrickson down there up at the front. I'm very nervous, though, about the incident point count possibly from here on out because... Correct me wrong, that's the second or third time. I think it's the third time we've seen a car touch by Felt's machine. Happens again. If I if anybody else, that might see a drive-through. The thing is, Ledholm hit him so hard he destroyed his front wing. So bye-bye Ledholm's chances for the win.
Yeah, it's never a nice one um, when you see someone making that contact and not to say that Lenholm was uh, doing anything on purpose in that regard, trying to give him points, but he was trying to battle hard when you have a teammate up ahead. Sometimes you have to uh, be a little bit more uh, helpful, but we do have some teammates up towards the front. So the top five is uh, Street Trends, Loaded and Byfelt, and then, of course, fours in Fredrickson, Ericsson and Lenholm. They are uh, one, two, three, four, five, alternating their way down. And it is now Fredrickson that we're looking on board with. He's getting on the back of the Street Trends driver uh, in second place of uh, Class Loden as they get closer and closer for that second place. And we've already seen these two teams not give too many breaks to each other. They're front runners with how it's gotten for this closing stage. Halberg out of the race officially, but we'll say this. Ericsson seems in position for the pounce. Byfeld not really gaining despite all this. He's just waiting, munching on popcorn to see what his teammate does when they go to the Coca-Cola in a minute here. Yeah, as we're coming to halfway in the final race of the season, side by side up ahead though, Ericsson to the outside. This is where we saw the 404 Helberg going off the track. Is he going to be trying to hold it all the way around the outside? No, he's going to have to come in. Oh, oh though, as we miss the apex there uh, for Loden, this is going to put Byfeld ahead on the road. And of course, therefore in the championship as well, ending any further hopes that Ericsson may have had as there was certainly contact. Ericsson tried to hold it on the outside in towards turn one. But as we got to turn two, contact was made. I mean, the first thought I had the second they started going on the defensive is, don't do it. Well, we've seen why. It's hard to pass from the outside. It's even harder when you're in the case of Ericsson. I think it's turned into a side pod. I think it's straight up arced into Loudon's side pod and expected a lot of give. This is... Oh, and there's a lot of drivers with trouble right in front of the leaders now. Yeah, I hope that they were just uh, trying to get um, out of the way there. But yeah, I, I agree on that one. Um, they came into the pit lane. Uh, when As soon as I saw the side-by-side, -side, I was like, what are these guys doing? Ericsson gets back past his teammate, though. So it's his back to a 1v1 battle with uh, Fredrickson um, up ahead. Let's see this. No, Logan yeah. does come wide. Uh, yeah, Ericsson is turning in, but Logan also comes wide. They sort of go into each other. And it almost becomes the mindset of, or rather, the new analysis from Race Control. Watch the glue. Yeah, Lydon absolutely missed the bottom. Ericsson not expecting that. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of people at the Rock and Soccer Ice Cream Show Social really having words exchanged. Yes, I'm sure the uh, the tensions will be high between the uh, the teammates or the, the not the teammates I should say the rivals, uh, the two teams. There's all oh, huge slide in the background for Ericsson. He is pushing. He still wants to show something left, show some pace that he's got after being so so strong in this season. Remember the opening, um, f well, what was it about 12 races of this season, uh, maybe even 15. He only finished p1 or two i think it was yeah up until the uh, red bull ring uh one round ago he only finished p1 or two uh, except one dnf that he had uh, back at laguna seca he was so strong all season um but it is going to be the consistency of byfelt that is going to uh, to win him uh, this championship as such but can he show one final maybe victory in these eight, last eight laps all right, now I think he's in a comfortable spot because Byfelt, with all those bits of contact, with all the traffic, has burnt up a lot of his stuff, I've noticed. Not as quick as how he was in the first two races where he had the clean air for the onset, ran up to half a second quicker, in some of the circumstances, had the long run speed. He's used up a lot of that speed on the tires just to get here. That being said, if you munch it down by margin, about two tenths per lap seems to be the average of the close-in. He needs to be perfect. If anything, he needs another half a tenth more per lap if he wants more than one pass attempt. That's the best he can get if he continues the speed he's going. He certainly is getting very tight in terms of him being able to, um, yeah, to get this. But let's see how it works out. Fredrickson, he's already won a race so far this season. Um, you know, not many people 
uh, have uh, have won races. Uh, just Ericsson, uh, Byfelt, uh, Lenholm, um, have Felidison, Giros, uh, and Bachmann, and then of course. Um, driver that we're talking about here, Fredrickson as well. So not many drivers as in the background once more. Ericsson goes off as the really, I don't think he's going to be able to catch down Byfelt, but is Byfelt going to catch down Fredrickson? At this point, the balloons are getting ready for the championship possibly if you're Byfelt as long as things go clean here for Fred Fredrickson pretty soon. I think he's in the draft though. Gained a lot of time. He went right into the margin he needed to, and I think he's just in the edge of slipstream, if not just outside of slipstream range for that front straightaway. That difference is at least a tenth or two per lap alone in the first sector. Yes, he's getting very tight, but I think Byfelt has the opportunity to get the sweep of the three races. And to be honest, it would be fitting a, to win the championship in that way, but also just from a, an event perspective, he has been the fastest driver and maybe he's not going to get the uh, the fastest uh, lap potentially uh, in this race, but he might be able to get the uh, get the win. We'll have to see how that one uh, works out in the final. Um, yeah, a couple of laps here, though, he is looking good on that fastest lap as well because he's just so fast when he gets in that clean air. But as you say, I think he burnt up tires a little bit more. And I say that, and he goes purple once more. So maybe he hasn't burnt up the tires. Maybe he's still got a lot left in that machine. Another purple right this minute, I believe, for Fredrickson. Just outside of it for Byfeld. What did I just say? He's just in the drafting range. You mentioned earlier in the broadcast, is the front straightaway going to be a major drafting section? Not for the setup, per se. But to get to positioning, a setup for a pass, you can argue it with what we've seen in races two and three. You get this close, it's enough to gain a car length, and you add that up over time, it adds more chances to get a chance to make a move in the first sector or the third sector. And not this part of the track, this is where you have to keep it, and just look at the elevation changes, the big curbs as well. And he's really closed in. And he's got five laps to do it, which is the important one. It's not going to be a last lap send. He has the time on his hand to work out where is best to make this overtake. Overtakes have been sparse in this race, though. It's not been the easiest one to get past. It had to be a big dive somewhere. How much risk does Byfelt want to take, knowing that the championship is in his hands? And of course, even if he uh, goes down the order, he's still looking good, but he'd love to finish this uh, race with a win. I think it's on. The move is by the next lap at the latest. Byfelt's just a bit more quicker right now. He's feeling a bit more comfortable. Yes, he burned up the stuff, as we mentioned, but the, just the raw comfortability with the track is a major difference. Watch for that final sector, the braking zones, the hard braking sections. He's been a little bit more deeper. Fredrickson is a little bit more better in this cleaner air for now, but that setup for the final corner might open up the door fast coming out of Carl in a second. Oh, huge slide out Momo corner as that is going to be a, a, a tricky one to hold on because Byfield will close in just a few more meters as you come on to the front straight. We're going to be starting lap 17, four laps remaining in this race. Is there going to be a uh, an open door at some point for Byfelt to try and get through? He gets closer in towards the sweeper. Not close enough to have a dive, but close enough to put the pressure on Oscar Fredrickson in the 112 machine as they come through into this second sector. It is getting very tense for the 112, but he seemingly has calmed down a lot from those first couple of races. Yeah, in terms of Fredrickson's case, I agree. In terms of everybody else's calmness, it's kind of gone the opposite way. But that's kind of how invert races do. Well, I was going to say this, though. Byfeld's trying to counteract that dirty air, trying to diamond differently. He seems to be a lot more comfortable in knowing what he needs to do to break that trend of getting plowy tight. He seems right where he needs to be to set up a pass this time. 
Yeah, he's close. He's close. Yeah, he's all going half a car width offline, trying to get closer, and he's a lot closer this time around. How is the draft down towards turn one? They do have a car ahead to somewhat think about, and of course, it is a Fours car right in the way towards turn number one. Are they going to get involved in this uh, battle? Let's see as they get closer and closer. Byfelt is just one car length away, but is it going to be close enough? Is the uh, the 79 there uh, getting out of the way as they are uh, able to continue on that was uh, Dan Homer doesn't actually get to involved just yet uh, for this one but Byfeld has another couple of opportunities that might have just changed things up a little bit because I noticed the one thing Byfeld if he really wanted to could have looked the stamp went inside the second he knows that lap traffic and I think he kind of said you know what I don't risk going side by side with the leader's teammate in front of us is lap traffic Nine times out of ten, you can kind of guess which car is going to get the pick. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We come on to the front straight this time around, and he's a car length back or so from where he was last time around. Two laps of rain on the board. Uh, not of this race, but of the season. Remember, Byford is looking good for the championship, but he wants to finish it with a race win. And of course, it may not be his rival that he's batting, but it's his rival teammate, which in some ways uh, is actually worse with the, uh, the, the, the difficulty and the aggression that they're going to be putting on each other. Yeah, now that by Oh, that was a big mistake, though, for Fredrickson. Byfeld is giving him a lot of breaks. If it wasn't for the fact this is a tight racetrack for some of these passing moves, Bifelt would have made the move with how much Fredrickson all of a sudden in the past couple laps, even with the traffic factored in, has been missing his apexes. Can we just say what a track to finish the season as well, especially in a in a format in a series like this with the chaos of the format itself, uh, but also just the championship um, situation that we've had. Coming on to the final lap, though, and it is going to be Fredrickson leading the way. Byfelt once more is about a car length or so behind in that draft, trying to get the run down towards the first corner. At some point, he's got to send it. Is it going to be here? No, he's just a bit too far away. I think Fredrickson's now, even with the fact he's slower out of the two right now, is in the catbird seat. It's going to take an, a risky move for Byfeld if he really wants the race win, but he already knows. He may have the potential of not getting the battle done, but he's just about done winning the war. We've seen some big slides though from Fredrickson, especially out of Momo Corner uh, during this battle. Is there going to be one final twist in the tail? Can he hold on to the pressure of Byfelt chasing him down? Can Fredrickson nail this corner? He has a bit of a wiggle. Byfelt will get closer. Is the breaking zone into the final corner enough to see a send from your championship elect? As we come out of the final corner, it's going to be Fredrickson on the road, but Byfelt winning the championship as he takes the crown from Jesper Eriksson, who did not have the day he wanted, but you can't take away the speed in that 105 he got pole position he won the first two races he got all the bonus points from fastest laps from clean races that he needed and then he sealed the deal with a second place finish here at Oran Park you can say what you want in terms of the win differences you can say what you want in terms of how things were in the start of the season compared to the final stretch but remember this, throughout this entire season, Byfeld's been the best of the best at the racetracks that require a lot of technical ability to be able to take checker flags and to be able to get speed. He's had the best of the technical ability, you can argue. And when he hasn't had teammates, he's been able to even utilize the draft of those of his enemies. In turn, Byfeld deserves this title because he's been the smartest of those for the title fight. And for the last six months or so in this championship, even but going back to the, the previous iteration of the Formula Series, he was, he's been the only one to consistently take it to Jesper Eriksson. We've seen four race wins for Michael Hafnidison, but he was nowhere in the championship. He just got caught up in too many issues. Byfeld's consistency, always being up there um, in the top five in pretty much every race that he does, that is why. You win a race, especially in a format like this, where you have the, the reverse grid races, you have the, the sort of the stop and start coming to the second race. You've got all these bonus points as well. He was just able to consistently add up his points tally. And when it mattered, 
today. Yes, Ericsson did not have the speed to hold on and hold on to his crown, which is, of course, is the important point. He leaves it behind and by felt will be taking that one. Here's confirmation of the final race of the season. Fredrickson got the win, though. His second of the season by felt will come through in second place. Ericsson rounds out the season with a podium and uh, then his teammate Lenholm is in behind. Hafidison, another strong result in P5. Holmbaum as well, showing some great pace for the youngest driver on the field in P6. Giros in seventh, Yonker, Kamara and Alexander Olsen from the back of the field jumps up into the top 10 with Bifelt also getting the fastest lap on lap number 11. Frisk will be in P11. Load in after being in P2, but just went wide in towards the hairpin, uh, is in P12. Neptune dropped down to P13. Wallen in uh, 14th. Lundberg is in 15th. Uh, Ericsson, Norgren, Morgan Schott, uh, Homer and Brostrom round out your top 20. The last two there being one lap down. And of course, the final few drivers uh, of the season is uh, Wallingstone. Then the drivers with some DNFs is Helberg, Hana, Motin, Vedestad, and Linus Brustrom. Unfortunately, in the 71 machine, finishing last for the final race of the season. I just realized there with Bifog, uh, two minutes, sorry, one minute, 2.6 as the fastest lap. I know is getting a bit cooler there, but certainly a very hot lap indeed to finish the season. Let's, uh, of course, um, unfortunately, uh, Bifog doesn't join us for some interviews, but let's get uh, a word with the race winner uh, in that case of the final race of the season. Oscar Fredrickson in the 112 machine for fours. You had a tricky first couple of races. Just uh, talk us through the issues that you had there in those first couple of races. Yeah, a bit of damage early on in the first heat, uh, which cost me some straight line speed, making it really difficult to follow, uh, especially on some of the turns uh, with a damaged front wing. And also being slow on the straight, and then in the in the second hit, I just spun on my own in the final corner. It's a very very tricky one uh, in this car, this on this setup. Uh, very oversteer if you get it wrong. Uh, so I just spun out on my own, and uh, it being that early on, I had to kind of stand still there, waiting for the entire field to pass, uh, and then go from there. Uh, managed to get some position still from there, and uh, yeah, it put me in a good starting position. Uh, with some damage control for the third race. Uh, so I was able to kind of put a gap on the other guys. But then when we get to the final race, you ended up after some uh, spins and some issues for some other drivers ahead, you ended up in that first position. But <laughs> no, it wasn't easy. You had the, uh, you know, the championship, uh, champion elect uh, of Marcus Beifeldt in behind you, putting all of that pressure on you for the final sort of 10 laps or so of that race. Just how calm were you able to keep yourself? Because we saw you wiggling the rear end and going wide a couple of times as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, seeing him approach, I was uh, getting kind of nervous because uh, I also had a little bit of contact at some point. So I wasn't sure if I had a little bit of straight line damage or what was the situation. Uh, but the car felt quite good still. Uh, and then, yeah, you're steaming close. A uh, couple of tenths uh, each lap. Uh, not knowing what's going to happen one, once he came close. Uh, but it's hard to pass here. So I kept, uh, kept being optimistic and hoping I could maybe get some good exits on the final corner and try to keep him behind. And then I think he uh, he was just uh, cruising behind to secure the championship because you could see him get the kind of close and then uh, yeah just stay behind really calmly uh, on the exits. So I don't think he was pushing much. Yeah, surely it was uh, going to be a risky uh, move in for you. A couple of race wins uh, this season. How do you sort of rate your season at, at, out of ten? Um, yeah, maybe not enough for the championship. Um, you know, championship charge, but you're still certainly up there in the top five. Yeah, uh, I think it was better than last season. Uh, a bit of an up and down season, I would say. Uh, uh, high highs and also low lows. Uh, so some unfortunate races with uh, mistakes on my end and incidents, uh, like we saw in race two today. Uh, but also some good races where I could fight at the front. So we we'll give it maybe a seven out of ten. Uh, hope for a better performance next season. Yes, yeah, certainly. Congratulations on your race win. And we'll speak to you next season. Thank you. And then next, uh, we will bring in uh, the driver finishing uh, not too far behind of uh, Jesper Eriksson in the 37 machine. Unfortunately, you're going to be losing your champion title.
but what a season you had. You must be overall, despite disappointed uh, today, you must be overall happy. You got those eight race wins and you were certainly very strong. Yeah, I'm happy throughout the whole season. There is so, I'm pretty disappointed now, though. Mostly over Sandworth, it was such a disaster for me where I pretty much lost it all. But so, first of all, just super happy for Marcus. He's such a great racer, the, one of the most respect, uh, respectful racers on the track, to be honest. Always leaves room, always up for a great fight. So, congrats to him. He truly deserves it. <laughs> but yeah, pretty disappointing for me. I really wanted it. Couldn't get it today. But hey, that's racing, that's life. Nothing to do now. Yeah, it certainly is. It is not like you were miles off uh, anyway, especially with those second places in the first couple of races. Just wanted to speak to you about that. Marcus was so fast in those first couple of races, managed to pull away by two, three seconds in each race. Um, were you not quite feeling comfortable with the car or, or was something going on there? Yeah, not really comfortable, to be honest. The, the car is kind of weird when you let off the brake in the corners, like turn two and the last turn, or it's quite odd, it can just snap on you, so I, I wasn't really that confident, but I could see all of his confidence in the, in the car. It, it was quite amazing to see him just pull away. So, uh, truly the next generation in, from, in the Swedish sim racing. Yeah, exactly. Can't wait to see what he can do. And um, of course, you may have lost this championship, but you still got one more to go for in the uh, in the Cup Series uh, <laughs> over the next couple of weeks. So yeah, good luck uh, for that one, and hopefully you can get a title there. Thank you very much, guys. And then uh, we will bring in uh, Ivan Lenholm of the uh, 263 machine for Fours Esports. And Ivan, uh, you're in a, a tight championship battle um, going for that third place uh, in the championship. You're just four points uh, behind Melvin Orkson. He wasn't here today. So then you're only two points behind Oscar Fredrickson. And even despite his race win, you were so consistent, um, you know, batting up for, you know, for the podiums in all the races today. Yeah, it's... Uh, really happy to come out with a podium finish in the series in the end. Uh, could possibly have been greater, but I'm still pleased. I missed uh, three race races. And uh, yeah, uh, consistency is key, you know. Yeah, absolutely. You also got yourself a, a race win uh, along the way. Do you think this is going to open up for a potential championship charge if we go racing in these cars once more? Yeah, possibly if uh, yeah, it could be possible with uh, putting on a little bit more time in the cars and uh, getting a bit more comfortable at some tracks, maybe practicing a bit more sometimes. Uh, I could possibly win the thing, the whole thing. I I think. Yeah, absolutely. And um, just wanted to get your um, opinion on this track as well. It's so difficult. It's almost like a street track, but without the barriers. How did you find it? I found it very tricky, especially first corner with the braking under turning and the last corner and all the height differences. And it it makes it uh, pretty tricky. And especially in this car, it can be pretty snappy sometimes. So just stay cool and uh, don't push too much because you will overheat the tires and then you will spin. Yes, that's a, a tricky one. But congratulations on your uh, couple of podiums today. And we wish you luck for, uh, for the, uh, the Cup Series race next week. Thank you. And then lastly, of course, we have to bring in Linus Brewstrom, the 71 machine. Not the day that he would have wanted to finish, uh, but he does struggle a little bit in this style of racing. But Linus, overall, what is your opinion of the, uh, of the season in general? Uh, also from a, an admin's perspective. Um, the season for me personally has gone way better than expected, uh, being 10th in the standings going into this race. Um, hoping to keep that, but I don't know, today was not the best day I've had, I guess. Uh, qualified 12th somehow, then got in an incident, got a meatball flag in race 1, drove up through the field quite a bit in race 2, and then we had an early crash in race 3, so... Um, we'll see where I end up, but I think my team will finish 3rd in the team standings. Um, so that's way above expectations as well for us. Um, and, uh, I would have wished that the championship fight between Marcus and Jesper would have been a little bit closer at the end, but, you know, almost being tied going into the final round, you can't ask for much more than that. And I think the season overall from an admin's perspective has been pretty good. Um, 
we've had some really good races and then some chaotic moments, uh, massive crashes at times. Um, but the participation has been on top the whole season. I think we had 27 drivers again today. So there is not much to complain about and having the championship coming down to the last race in a 21 race season, that's just outstanding. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. And uh, was it your decision to come to Oran Park? A very, very interesting one, especially for the final race of the season. Um, well, I asked around for some ideas on which tracks people wanted to run. And then we had some of the tracks being aligned with the Swedish Championships, which used the same car. And then the first run round was the track to start the season with. And that ended up being quite a lot of bigger tracks. So I knew that I wanted a couple of shorter tracks at least to get a big variety. So um, I had to choose between basically wherever we were last week I can't, or two weeks ago. I can't even remember. And then this track for the final race. And I thought Oran Park is going to produce much better racing than Sandboard, which is where we were. Um, so it, in the end, it was my decision, yes. <laughs> now, it's certainly a, a nice one. It's a very interesting track indeed. So, yeah, thank you, Linus, for organising all of this. And we will, uh, yeah, see you for some Cup Series racing next week. Yeah, thank you. Yes, as uh, Justin, we round out another season of this uh, of this great championship. And just what are your f final thoughts of the uh, of the format, and of course, uh, by felt being champion. I think an exciting season overall. I think we've seen a lot of intriguing action in turn because the format, especially when it came to the inverts. But in the end, to win a championship, you not only need to be able to get wins, you need to be consistent, and. One of the main things that was emphasized by Ericsson, even in the midst of defeat, he emphasized how Byfeldt's one of the cleanest and most respected drivers in the garage. He can sense that with how he drives, but also just with the consistency and speed he has at a variety of tracks. Even the races he didn't do the best in, when he nearly flipped over a couple times to start the road Atlanta, for example, he still picked up solid point days then. To put it quite frank, I think in the end, Byfeldt showed why he was the deserving champion. Yes, he didn't get as many wins, but he was the best of the drivers on most of the tracks. Certainly a well-deserved champion, but that is not the only champion that we need to find if on this series. We have the Oval NASCAR Cup Series coming back next week, the round of 10 finale at Dover to find the final five drivers to go to Homestead, Miami a couple of weeks later. It's the 25th of April, 8 p.m. CST, same place here on Raceball TV. And we can't wait to have your company there once more to see who is going to be going for that championship. It's been myself, Cameron Roger, Justin Prince alongside me and Dane Baird on the production of this Race Spot TV broadcast. And until next week at Dover, we wish you a very warm goodbye and we congratulate Marcus Byfelt on being the champion. <laughs>